Hi, I want to talk to you a little bit about lighting and posing for fairy portraits. So I've been doing fairies for about 15 years or so and I realized a long time ago that because of the nature of cluster booking and photographing as many as 25 sessions in a day that I needed to have a consistent workable and sellable system for creating the best poses and the best lighting. And I've worked with other photographers over the years and help them create their own unique style of which they've taken into their own uh, brand, so to speak. So I'm going to highlight some of these photographers right now as well as show you some of my images and explain to you the three basic lighting that I've noticed that works best for fairy portraits. I noticed too that some photographers seem to just sort of get this wrong and they use lighting that is just not very good. So you want to be uh, very certain that you have a good lighting that will work well with your workflow and ultimately with your client. So if you look at some of my images right here, this is the first style of lighting and it's considered a bit of a classic portrait lighting and it's very, uh, very reliable and it's very, it's kind of bland in a sense, but not really. If you look closely, say for example, look at this image here. Now, if we zoom in, Notice a shadow. This is a basic rule that I've always used in my photography. Shadow side to the camera, even if it's very subtle, but the mass of the light, the main light, is hitting the mass of the face. Generally speaking, that's a bread and butter. Uh, you can call it modified loop lighting or loop lighting, whatever it is. It's very uh, plain Jane, but very functional, and it's a very nice balance between the main light and the fill light. It's very predictable and it's very functional. So I use this lighting 90% of the time when I'm shooting fairies. I use it over and over and over again. If I were to turn her head away from the main light, there would be too much shadow on the other side and it wouldn't work. But if I turn the fairy 90 degrees to the camera and I brought my main light all the way around, as you can see in this image right here, this is a profile lighting, which I use once in a while, but not that often when I'm photographing fairies. Like I said, 90% of my lighting when I'm photographing fairies is a modified loop. It's very plain Jane. Now, Maria also does a lot of fairies, and let's look at some of her images. Her style of lighting is very similar to mine. However, she doesn't seem to use a kicker light the way I do. Let me show you what I mean. You can see in this image here that I shot. Notice along the edge of the, the girl on the opposite side to the main, there's a nice sort of a glow. Now let's look at Maria's images and you'll see there's a little less of that. So it's not, a, it's not one is right or wrong. It's not that at all. They're both very, very functional. It's whatever works for you. I'm just showing you different lighting configurations and how they have been evolved and how they work with other photographers that I've come to know over the years. So her style is very similar to mine, minus the kicker light more or less. So she's also considered a very classic lighting, very classic portrait lighting, and you can see by these samples here. It's very, very functional, it's very sellable, and it creates a nice image with which to start from and bring into Photoshop. And you can tell that Maria creates a lot of different looks and she enhances her images quite a bit. All right, now let's go into Alicia's fairies. First thing I want to show you is her lighting layout. Check it out. Now you can see by this layout that her main light is substantially brought over almost beyond 90 degrees to the camera. If you look at a lot of my images and a little less so with Maria's, my lighting is almost 90 degrees. I want that main light coming from an angle, but I'm also angling the head sort of into the main light. She's doing the same thing. And if you notice it, there's a strong shadow. The shadow is much more dominant, predominant. And this kind of lighting is considered dramatic, classic portrait. I don't have an easier way to say it, so I'm just making this, these terms up. They're very similar in many, many ways, 
and they're both very functional insofar as how they're applied both the way I light and photograph my fairies, the way Maria lights and photographs hers, and Alicia seems to have a desire to create a little more drama in her fairies. And you can see this in the samples that I'm showing you. Now the last one I want to show you is Andrea. Now Andrea's lighting is a little flatter. Now you might think that sounds bad, but it's not. Because here's why. If you look at her lighting, what, is she, what she's doing is, what Andrea is doing is she's creating a base with which she can add a very strong painterly effect to. And she does this with dramatic flair. So this works very well considering her brand and considering the ultimate goal that she has in mind. I mean, just look at these images. She spends a lot more time than I do, and I'm sure than uh, what Maria or Alicia do in Photoshop, but the end result certainly pays off. Could you do this sort of a workflow and end result using the same lighting that we use in ours? Probably, but do you need to? I find with my lighting and specifically with Alicia's where she has a little more of the drama, you have to be much more careful. The posing has to be very precise and angled according to the direction of the camera to the main light and depending on where the face is turned. So Andrew is not so much going in that direction. She's putting a lot more creative energy into the final workflow. None of these are right or wrong. It's whatever works for you. I developed my lighting based on the idea that uh, we were doing a lot of work in one day, photographing all day long, many, many, many sessions. So I had to not spend a whole lot of time. Plus, I find that children basically don't want to sit for that long, so I tend to go a little quick to get them in, get them out. I don't want to drag it out so long that they're going to get annoyed at me. So the lighting in that respect sort of is reflected in the practical side of how I'm photographing my sessions. So it's different for everybody. That's the way I see it. That's the way lighting works insofar as fairies are concerned and it's different for everybody. Use what works and create something that is totally 100% reflective of your brand, the look that you want to go with. And if you're not there yet, practice. I find that uh, the position of the head to the main is so important. So, so important. And the details is also in the position of the hands, the hands, the legs, feet, and posture. All these things play together with the light. And then you come up with a system that works for you. And you'll find you'll end up doing that over and over and over again because it works. All right, thanks.